my intermediate value theorem. Um, this theorem is pretty important, so we're going to try to understand this conceptually in addition to knowing it. And so the theorem states that if f of x is continuous on a closed interval a, b, and k is any number between f of a and f of b, then there exists at least one number c such that, okay, such that, okay, so this c number is going to be between a and b and f of c is going to equal k. This is a number sign there. Okay. Alright, so what does this exactly mean? Right, so let me draw a graph and hopefully it will make it a bit more clear. A bit more clear, yeah. Okay. So say we have this graph here. Wow, it's terrible. Let me do that again. There we go. Okay, I have this graph here. Um, it looks something like this. All right. Okay. So say A is here, and B here, and B is here. So the first condition is that the graph is continuous between A and B. Okay, a B, A and B. Okay. So the graph is continuous between A and B. Is it? Yup. It is. Okay. So now the second part is we have to find f of A. So f of a, we're just simply reading the graph here, right? So at a, f has a value this much. And at b, f, the graph has a value this much. Okay. And k is any number between f, a, f of a, and f of b. So say k is this number here, then what the theorem tells me is that there's going to be at least one number between a and b such that f of this number c is going to equal k. Okay. So let me repeat that. This theorem tells us that there's going to be at least one number c, so one number c. We're going to call this number C, and at f of C, that's going to equal k. So at C, the function is going to equal k. See that? So let's take a look here. So there's going to be one number between A and B, called C, and at this C value, the function is going to have a value k. So f of C is going to equal k. Does that make sense? It's really, um, I think the wording makes it a bit harder than it really is. So what this theorem is basically saying is that between f of a and f of b, okay, the function has to pass through every value between f of a and f of b, between a and b. And that does make sense, right? Because for a continuous function, travel from f of a and f of b, it has to pass through every number between here. There are no jumps, right? You can't just suddenly go here and then jump up to here. It has to pass through every number between this number in the interval here. Okay. So for a continuous function, if x exists between a and b, then every value between f of a and f of b will be passed. However, the intermediate value theorem tells us that k will only exist. No, sorry. The intermediate value theorem tells us that only um, tells us that at least one c value will exist. It does not tell us how many c values. It tells us only one. So in this case, there's only one c value that corresponded to k here. But say we had um, this case instead. 
and B was here, and A is here, so an F of A, F of B, okay, F, that's an F, F of B, and say K was here. Okay. Then that tells me that the intermediate graphic signal tells me that there's going to be at least one C. But here I can take a look at it and see that there are actually three such C values. F of C is going to equal K. So K passes through, so the graph is going to pass through the value K three times at each here, here, and here. Okay, so that's more or less what the intermediate values theorem is telling us. Now, one common application of this theorem is to find roots. And how we use this theorem to find roots is as follows. So say I have, go, say this is graph here. Okay. And, okay, so, I'm given this graph here, and I know the value of f of a and f of b. And I know that the value of f of a is a positive number, take a look here, and the value of f of b is a negative number. And the question is, is there going to be a root, is there going to be a root in between A and B? Answer is yes. Why? Okay. So the intermediate value theorem tells us that every value between F of A and F of B will be passed. And for a number to go from a positive sign to a negative for the graph to go from the positive region to the negative region, it has to cross through Y equals zero. Right? So it has to, right? Because if it's going from a positive number to a negative number, it has to somewhere cross the, the x-axis. And when it crosses the x-axis, that's a root. So here in this case, but however, notice that the theorem does not tell us how many times it will pass through the x-axis. It only tells us that it will pass through at least once. So in this case, uh, we see that it's going to pass through five times. Right, so there are five roots. But then, um, does it have to be like that? No, right? Maybe three. So in this case, um, uh, in this case, it's three. But we can apply. So how we would apply the theorem is as follows. Um, we would say that okay, uh, a, right? A is a negative number, and b is a positive number. Therefore it's going to have to pass through zero somewhere, so therefore there is a root in between A and B for the, for the graph, for the function. Maybe an example will clear this up. So, f of x is equal to x cubed minus 5x squared plus 7x minus 3. Okay, and the question is, show with the intermediate value theorem that f of x has a root between 2 and 4. Uh, 2 and 4. So show with the intermediate value theorem that f has a root between 2 and 4. Okay. So how would we do that? So first we would have to say that the graph at the function satisfies the two conditions. Okay. So the first condition is that f of x is continuous on 2, 4. Right. So is this graph continuous? Well, this, this is a polynomial, so it's continuous everywhere. So yes, the graph is continuous between 2 and 4. Okay, so k is any value between f a and f b. So we want to find a root, and the roots occur, the roots occur when y is equal to 0. So in this case, our k value is going to be 0. So first we have to find uh, f of 2 is equal to, if you solve it, it comes out to be negative 1 and f of 4 is going to equal 9. Okay, so is zero, is 0 between f of 2 and f of 4? Yes. 0 is between negative 1 and 9, right? So 0 is between f of 2 and f of 4. Therefore, there will be a value c. And this c will be between 2 and 4 such that f of c is going to equal 0. 
So, the, you can think of the intermediate value theorem as a guarantee. So yes, there is guaranteed to be at least one root between two and four. Okay. So we show, basically showed it. Now, there's usually a second part to these questions. The second part is going to, and find root. And find lat root. Okay, so how do you find root? You just simply, first of all, to factor this. It comes out to be x minus 1 squared times x minus 3. Okay, and we set this to 0. So once we set this to 0, then we see that uh, the roots are going to be 1 and 3. Okay, And we want the value that's between 2 and 4. So there you go. Our c value is 3. And is this c value between 2 and 4? Yes. And at f of c, we have the answer is going to be 0. So therefore, 3 is a root of the function between 2 and 4. So that's how we applied um, the intermediate variance theorem. So it basically, it's a guarantee that we're going to find at least one root. And you know what? I have a graph here. Wow. Okay, so this is a graph of that function. And you can see that we have a root at 1 and 3. Then there, it is guaranteed that there's a root between 2 and 4, right? So. 2 is here, 4 is here, see so that 2 is negative, 4 is positive. So therefore the graph has to cross through the x-axis somewhere, and it does so at c equals 3. Okay, that's the theorem.